Calc 2 software program. What we will do in this tutorial is we'll show you some of the basics of Labor Calc on a new calculation and then we will open the file that we have already created before and then show you how it all ties together with multiple employees. The first things you need to do as a company is go to the company, give a company name, go to the payroll cost tab and put in your workers compensation and if if it applies to your company the long service leave percentage. It's important to note at this point that Labor Calc 2 does not cater for payroll tax so what we suggest that if you do have payroll tax applicable to your company you would put that in the overhead section. The next thing you would do is you would go to the overhead section and from your accounting program take 12 months of your expenses and actually populate each of these fields. We've put some of the basic ones or the ones that we think that you would use regularly and all you need to do is fill them out. But if you take it straight from your accounting program you can do that yourself. For example workers compensation we will calculate previously so that would not be used. Also you do, have, you do not put wages and salaries and you do not put superannuation in your overhead file as that will be calculated in the system itself. Now also with labour re cost recovery, some people want to find out the base cost of their total overheads. So of course if you're a company that has material sales in your business, then we would also suggest that you apply your material profit here so that when you are doing your labour costing, you are not expecting your labour to recoup all of the overhead recovery of, of that previous overhead tab, but it would be shared between labour and material. If of course you want to have a set profit margin in your business then you could leave the material profit out and that could be classed as profit for the business. So what we'll do now is we shall open a file. So this is a file that's been done uh, previously so you can see that on the left hand side we've got some of the staff, Tracy, we've got the boss, we've got a TA and a first and second year apprentice and three tradesmen. Now of course you know, in your own company, these could be the actual names of your employees. So if we have a look at the company file, you'll see that we put the workers' compensation and the long, sleeve, long service sleeve amount in. Under overheads, this is now being populated straight from our expense file. So for this example, our MyOB expense file was printed, and then we've taken those figures over 12 months, and we've put them in here. Now you may want to look at this on a three monthly basis and then times it out by four because certain things can change over a three, six month period depending on whether you add new employees, other employees or you invest in things that you may not have allowed for. But as you can see we've gone through and populated this with everything. If you wanted to you could just do a one liner but some companies do like to see what they've got on, in here and how they've built that. So with a profit tag, profit tab you can see that we've we've put in our material profit in this company. We've also put our small amount of bank interest and if there was any other income that you wanted to enter into this, you can then do it. There is a feature where you can input a MyOB file, uh, but that, that I would suggest you contact Spearhead Software for assistance on that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll look at two of the employees here, just two of the different ones. So Tracy, the one thing, back at the chargeable hours tab, the one thing Tracy is she is 100% non-productive staff, non-income bearing staff. So even though we have put in the lost time for um, so, uh, holidays and public holidays and we've also put an unchargeable amount, it doesn't really apply to Tracy. Because once we've put in her wages here, all her wages, including the overhead recovery of workers' compensation and superannuation, that total amount will get added back to our total annual overhead to be recovered by our working employees. So if we move out to our next employee, we have a look. So we got Tradesman 1. So Tradesman 1 is working 52 weeks a year at 38 hours a week. So the first amount that we're going to pay him is this This guy is going to be paid for $1,976. It's important to note that with Labor Calc we are suggesting that all recovery or labor costing is done on a normal week and not including overtime. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at our lost time. So by clicking on the, the three dots at the end of this box, we can now come in here and put annual leave 
of four weeks a year sick leave we're going to allow two weeks sick leave and we're going to allow two weeks public holiday now you can you can become a little bit more smart here if you wanted to and you could say well I know on average our sick leave is 28 hours a year 58 hours a year whatever but public holidays of course are compulsory also with our apprentices um, and I'll show you an apprentice later on but here you can also have TAFE here you could also have toolbox meetings here you could have uh, study or anything else that is lost time that just these are hours that will not be productive so straight away you can see that we've lost those 304 hours so his working hours are now down to 1672 we also have another unchargeable field now depending on your business and the type of work you do is depending on what you would put in this field so 15% is generally an acceptable level for service-based industries where you have people on the road people have to go to wholesalers or to suppliers regularly or they have to just there's a lot of traveling involved that's not chargeable so 15% is quite acceptable if you have a contracting based company where your employees are spending more of their time on a fixed site so they actually get there in the morning and they finish the day at the same place you know then that unchargeable rate could be anywhere from six to ten percent so that's just a you know what the company or what you feel is is accurate to the type of business you do but so far as you can see now we're paying for 1976 hours a year but our chargeable hours maximum chargeable hours are now down to 1421 so we now go to the payroll details tab this is where we now put how we pay the guy so in this example we're paying him $32 an hour but we could put in here weekly year fortnightly or monthly so the choice is up to you allowances we can also go and add additional allowances so if we've got things like travel fares construction uh, if you're in like Western Australia or Queensland where your guys are you know going up north to sites where there's there's accommodation allowance and there's mobile phone allowance and there's food allowance well this all can be put here into the allowance field and that will get calculated and will add to the hourly rate of pay so $32 an hour by the 976 hours a year this this bloke's going to work we've got a base pay of $63,232 with a pay rate of $32 but of course the moment we divide that by the hours the maximum hours this person can work we've now got our first base cost of $44.49 an hour so that's our base cost for this guy we then move on to our additional payroll it's automatically picked up the 1.87 percent and the four for holidays 4.5 percent for our from our company file to pick up our long service leave fund and our superannuation and we can also enter our superannuation contribution here so this example was done when it was nine it is now currently 9.25 so we could change that if we wanted to what it will also do once we have finished building all of our staff so it's very important that we put all our team in here it will say that this person earns 21.74 percent of the total wages bill of productive wages bill he now needs to recoup 21.74 percent of our total business overhead which is now 161,575 divide that by the working hours that he can do that the maximum working hours he now has an overhead recovery cost of $24.72 then we just come to the average and we can put other allowances for profit but we won't do that at this point so with an apprentice you will see that with our uh, sorry at our chargeable hours we've we've included annual leave public holiday sick leave and we've included eight hours per week TAFE for an apprentice so once once it's very important that you don't look at any of these figures until you've actually put every single staff member into your calculation but what we're looking at now here's our trades and we did so we've got our $32 an hour pay rate $44.49 base rate after taking off the lost time we didn't put any allowances in here we did for our TA our payroll cost per hour is three dollars or sorry six dollars eighty four for our tradesmen our overhead recovery is $24.72 so the total final cost for tradesman one is $76.05 
So we can see by just looking at all of these exactly what our final cost is and then the individual cost per each of those sections. I can actually print that to a report. So I could do an overview report. So there's, there's that overview report that we can now print out. So you can see what the, the, the total pay is for the year. You can see what the payroll costs are. You can see what the overhead recovery that we need to get back is to see what all of these figures have been based on. So that's Labor Cal. If If you have built um, a tradesman and you have a lot of people very similar, what I could do is I can actually right mouse button on that and go Safe Employee to a template. I can give that template a name and then click on New and it will save that template. So if I'm adding new employees, I could actually right mouse button and go New Employee and I can base that employee on any of the templates that I've already set up. So those templates can include you know, with, uh, what portion they may be in administration, they could include the lost time, they'd include, they could include the um, payroll costs, the superannuation costs, any allowances that you may have. So you can have as many templates as you require. Once you've finished, save your file, and you have now finished doing your labour costings for your company. So I hope this has helped you using labour calc for the first time, or if you're per looking to purchase something, Hopefully that's assisted you and guiding you whether Labor Kelp is a good solution for your company moving forward. Keep your eye open in 2015 when Labor Kelp 3 will be designed and developed and that will include a lot more features of what you'll be able to do with staff. You'll be able to allocate commissions, you'll be able to allocate overtime, you'll be able to allocate overhead recovery by percentage. So watch this space. Thank you for looking at Labor Kelp. If you've got more information please contact Spearhead Software on the number that's showing on your screen or the email address that also is showing on your screen.